Hi guys. So we are in the sixth line of the 12th gene key now, uh, which means that we have been in it for six days and that we're going to have the possibility to look back and feel back into the week and how it showed up for us. Uh, so the 12th gene key goes from the shadow of uh, vanity to the gift of discrimination and the city of purity. Uh, and it's a programming partner with the 11th gene key that goes from obscurity to idealism to light. Uh, and those are also complete mirrors if we look at the trigrams, the, ge the geometry of them. And they are on opposite sides of, of the mandala, of course. Uh, we're going to look in more to how, how they interplay as well uh, a little later. So uh, the 12th gene key is uh, in the individual circuitry, what we also call the creative stream uh, in integral human design. And it gets this emotional flavor to it. Um, and it's on the abstract side of the body graph. And as we know in the individual circuitry, it, it tends to be melancholic. Uh, and melancholy is also beautiful. That's why all the love songs uh, exist, basically. And uh, what we can see in the 12th gene is that there is this caution uh, to, it's caution with emotions, but it, it's kind of, it knows the 22 on the other side. So there's the channel from the throat, the 12th gene key, and the 22nd gene key, the emotional, that meet in, in the channel of openness. And it's like the 12th gene key knows that that is where it connects to. So it can be cautious of that. Um, in astrology, the 12th gene key is in, it's in Gemini and it's mutable air. So we can see that it has this tendency of, of moodiness. So sometimes it has the willingness, the openness to, to connect and to articulate emotion. It comes from the throat, right? Uh, and sometimes it's cautious. It doesn't want to go there. Um, and it can feel this kind of standstill, almost like a, a freeze of not wanting to share, of not wanting to go there, of not having that openness. Uh, and, and in that, that's where we can start to see the shadow. When we don't want to, want to go there, and we kind of want to stay a bit superficial, and we don't want to look bad or, or feel bad, we, are, we become kind of stuck in, in vanity or superficiality. We want it to look good. Um, more than actually being true and authentic. Um, so that is really like the shift from the shadow to, to the higher frequencies, that whatever it is, it, what comes out is, is authentic. It's the soul that expresses. Our emotions are, are, and feelings are part of the, the heart, the soul complex. Um, we also know, like we were saying before, it's, there's a melancholy in the individual circuitry so we have this um we have this ability to express art and to um, art and beauty and and all the all the creative things in life you could say here's also interesting when we look at the chain so the elements that make up uh, this 12th gene key is have heaven over earth so heaven it's two tr trigrams of the first gene key and uh, earth is two trigrams of the, the second gene key, right? Or two earths make up the second gene key and two heaven trigrams make up the first gene key. Uh, so the elements that, that build up the 12th gene key are heaven and earth, are the first gene key and the second gene key, which is, you know, the kind of the fem feminine archetype and the masculine archetype, yin and yang. Um, and, and we know that the first gene key is about freshness and beauty. Uh, and the second gene key is about unity and orientation. Um, and this is very much how we can look at the way up to the higher frequencies in gene key 12, um, because it uses art, it uses beauty to understand its unity. Its it, purity and unity are basically the same in the cities, like when we realize that there's only one, there's no separateness, when we don't try to look better from anybody else because we realize that we're all one basically in the highest um, in the highest uh, frequency and I wanted to say that something about the gift frequency as well which is discrimination um, and it, it really is this ability to discern if something come, comes from this soul if something comes from an authentic place or not so it's a good it's, these, these people are good with this jinky are good 
uh, critics of music, of art, of film, like really f being able to feel into if it's authentic. And if it doesn't, they become, you know, they don't trust and they become very cautious. So in that sense, this cautiousness is something that is actually really serving really good. Um, and there, there's a quote uh, that I actually wanted to look at. So the 12th gift does not shy away from anything that is authentic, no matter how messy it can be. That's what it says under the, the 12th gift. And I really kind of like this um, because sometimes we think that when, when something is authentic, it kind of looks clean in some way. And this, this quote here does really show us that authentic can be really messy and emotions can be really mess messy and human beings can be really messy and and opening up and, and actually where we are right now purifying our emotions in the emotional center uh, and sometimes they are kind of distorted and and that is what we say go into the shadow because within the shadow lies the gifts so we go in, in the, into the dishonor the weakness the reaction the victimization the desire and then from there, when it purifies all the gift frequencies of, you know, freedom and lightness and uh, humanity and compassion, like all these these higher frequencies that we have that we have of the gene keys that are in the emotional center emerge from there. Um, so uh, what I thought about this week was so I was I was in the healing circle uh, at a tantra festival. And I also had a possibility to attend workshops in this festival. And um, a lot of workshops that had like a, a shamanic quality, like temple arts quality, you know, where, where we work with life force as the shamanic field, as the, the you could say the fuel somehow, or the medium is a better word, for, for what's actually opening up, what's actually um, the transmission that actually comes through. So, what you can see in those in those fields is really that whatever wants to come through comes through that's tantra right we allow and embrace um anything that that arises and when we have human beings that go into their emotional bodies and and, and start to open up for example i went to a workshop that was breath work so when we open up the emotional body and let it express things that might have been pushed down by the mental our mental abilities or even like by the contraction in the physical body uh, when we open up that it looks really messy but then how we might feel after a breath work like that it's amazing because we have more space and there is more purity and and maybe we also have we're gonna the days after we're gonna be able to discriminate you know what that was and 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 further on in our lives you know what we choose and and where how our emotions uh, work with us etc um, and also there were workshops where basically we do things that we don't do in the normal world like we have to relate to to our body as, as naked being vulnerable having courage to st stand in the middle and being seen in different ways and how that is also something that that shows this purity of, of the human being but also that many times really awakens this cautiousness in us like can, can i really do this is this really somewhere I want to be this is so outside my comfort zone this is so this is so impossible to have any vanity when I have to show myself this naked to other human beings and this is part of like why Tantra is really part of my life I I would say that I come more from the yogic background than more from like the path of con concentration or meditation but really the freedom and the purity and the, the messiness and, and, and really like the rawness and the realness, <laughs> those are words that I feel in the, in the tantric uh, communities, is something that I feel like the human being needs now as we're purifying this, this emotional center. And that it takes a lot of courage and, and that it, it's the emotional body is often kind of where, where things are hidden. So even when we look at the Trinity, uh, of embodiment in the hologenetic profile, the SQ, the EQ, and the IQ. It's often that EQ that kind of is, you know, it connects both to the, to the IQ on one side, the EQ connects to the IQ and the SQ. And it's that, um, that 
age from seven to 14, when, when we are emotionally triggered and we, when, when we start finding ways of not having to feel, of, of escaping or of going inwards or self-sabotaging, like all the lines that we have in the EQ. And for me, in, in the tantric community, when, when it's a deeper work than sexual play, because I know that sometimes there is this misunderstanding uh, in today's world with the neo-tantra, but I'm speaking much more of, of a deeper layer of, of actually going inwards, of actually, you know, even uh, like we're saying, going into the shadow and allowing them and see what comes from there and being able to hold space for each other in that real state when, when anything can arise, whether it's beauty or something else. And this is what I was saying before that the 11th Jinky, the programming partner of the 12th Jinky, you know, it's, it is sometimes the obscurity of the 11th Jinky that we go back into. And from that, when we purify, when we're not afraid of anything anymore, and of this Scorpio quality, then like our ideals, like new ideals, uh, and new ideas can emerge from there. So there is a lot of aliveness in, in those two programming partners. Um, so yeah, this is my contemplation for this week. Thank you guys.